Hi, I'm Dallas, and I'm from Pennsylvania, and you're watching TJV. I had to turn on my bunk heater last night for the first time this season. And now I gotta wear a sweater in the morning for the first time this season. And I can see my breath for the first time this season. Cold out, eh, Diesel? Hey, don't chase the bird. Diesel! Dude, man, he's got wings. You can't get him, man. Good try, though. Good try. Pretty nipply this morning. Yeah. It's warming up now, though. In the sun here, you can... The sun is still warm. But you can tell that that dreaded season is coming. Fall time. Which leads to the evil season. Winter. We don't speak of her. Though honestly, I sort of like this temperature. You know, when it gets a little cool at night, I like it to be cool when I sleep. And I can always turn the heater on, the bunk heater, if it gets a little too cold. But if it gets too hot, I can't sleep. And then I gotta turn the air conditioning on, and then it's just not the same for me. Maybe because I grew up in Canada and Manitoba, and that's just what I'm used to. I don't know, I like it when it's colder. But I like it when it warms up during the day like this, you know. I like springtime the best. That's my favorite season. One, because it means you have a whole summer ahead of you yet. Makes you feel good inside. Two, there's no bugs out yet. They're all still dead from winter. And three, everything turns green. It's so exciting. I love that time of year. So I look forward to spring 2017 already. At least we're not losing the leaves yet, right? You can tell on this little bush over here, they are changing color a little bit though. Unless they're always like that, I don't know. Cause I don't see any other leaves changing color yet. It's so sad when it starts to get cold. All right, just got ourselves loaded up with almost 42,000 pounds of agricultural product. Some kind of seed feed deal, I don't know. Some kind of stuff in my trailer that came out of the ground. We're gonna take that stuff back to the yard in Manitoba. And I believe someone else is going to uh, hook onto it and pull it down to the States. I hear it's going to Iowa, but the, but the paperwork says New York. But they said that the paperwork's wrong and that it's actually going to Iowa. I'm like, well then why does the paperwork say New York if it's going to Iowa? Why doesn't it say Iowa, right? Blows my mind, I don't know. Obviously, something's going on. But it's not my problem because I'm not going across the border with it. I'm just going to the yard. We're leaving Regina, Saskatchewan, headed eastbound towards my home province, Manitoba. Once again, we're staring at the rear end of, a, of an RV. Someone on vacation when I'm not. Good for them. Good for them. We are doing the speed limit, but we're also going through a construction zone. He was prepared, he was doing the speed limit for the construction zone well before we arrived at the construction zone. He was set and ready. No tickets for this law-abiding citizen. It was like three miles before we even hit the 60 zone. He's going 60. Oh yeah, he's ready to go. Oh, look at this, he's taking off on me now. Wow, he does have power in that thing. Look at this. I'm also carrying a very heavy load right now, so I don't have as much uh, acceleration. What I don't like here about what they did east of Regina, I'm glad they're doing all this construction, fixing it up, they're doing a really good job. Their construction speed limits are a little ridiculous though. Same with Manitoba. I'm not gonna leave you out, Manitoba. You're not free of scrutiny from Trucker Josh. Because now, in Manitoba, if it's a construction zone and there's not a worker in or a piece of machinery in sight, there's just cones on the highway, you still have to slow down to 60 kilometers an hour. It used to be, you'd only have to slow down when there was workers present, right? Which makes more sense. But I guess people weren't slowing down, I don't know what they did. But anyways, they changed it now. So now even if it's like midday on a Sunday, there's not a worker or piece of machinery on site, just a bunch of cones, you know, beside the road. You have to slow down to 60 kilometers an hour. That's 35 miles an hour in a 65 zone. 60 kilometers an hour and 100 is like, 
I'm not really complaining. I'm just I, I don't understand that logic, but it obviously is there for a reason. I don't understand a lot of logic that comes out of the out of the government, but it's probably why I don't work in the government. I wouldn't understand anything. It's like why do we have this law? If you can't explain it to me, it's going away. That's the way I would do it, man. I'd be that lawmaker that would actually be a lawbreaker. Wait, that sounded bad. A law taker. A law. Instead of making laws, I would search for laws that we could delete. You know? Oh, we don't need this. Get out of here. Yeah, we don't need this one. Nope. Don't need this one either. Nope. Lots of construction here around the Flying J in Balgoni. Balgoni baloney. Am I the only one who thinks of that every time? Oh boy, oh boy, oh, bump it, oh, 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 thank goodness I got a heavy load, that sort of smoothed that out, all right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna stop in here for a coffee. It's not Timmy's, but it is second best. And when you can't get to a Tim Hortons, where do you go for coffee? Actually, I think I'm supposed to say you go to Flying J all the time, right? Right? <laughs> uh, oh, look at the little fam. There's a dog over there. Look at that. There's a dog, man. You see him? Oh, you saw him. Oh, yes, you did. Good boy. Good boy. We have our new marching orders for tomorrow. We're going to have this trailer at the yard in Manitoba in six hours. 10 hours after that, at a glorious, glorious 4 a.m. in the morning, I will be leaving back to Saskatchewan, going back to Saskatoon. Uh, do a little round trip, Saskatoon and back. I have plans, not this weekend, but the following weekend. Uh, so I need to be home for that weekend. So they're just keeping me closer to home so that I can make sure that I uh, that I can be home for that weekend. I try to make all the appointments that I need to get done all in one shot so that I don't have to have to be home that often, you know what I mean? So I got a bunch of appointments I gotta get done around that time. So I'll probably be home, not this weekend, the next weekend for probably about four days. I don't wanna stay home for more than four days really, but we'll see if we can get everything done in that time. So that's why we're staying close to here, which means that it's gonna be a lot of dropping hooks, a lot of turn and burns a lot of pick up and givers. I don't know what I'm taking back to Saskatoon, but all I know is I'm leaving at the ungodly glorious hour, 4 a.m. That means I've gotta be up before that. I've gotta hook on and actually be leaving by that time. I might not even leave the yard. I might not even go home tonight. I might just sleep right in the truck at the yard. I know that'd be the best bet for me. I'd get more sleep that way, but I sorta of wanna go home, you know? But what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go home, I have to go straight to bed. So what's the point? Maybe I'll just sleep in the truck. I don't know, we'll decide. This is Saskatchewan still. Five and a half hours now, or five and three quarter hours from destination in southern Manitoba. Glorious southern Manitoba. A lot of glorious stuff happening around here. Well, this should be interesting. I'm about to pass a house. This guy's clipping along too. Speed limit's 110 here. I'm doing 105. That's all I can do. My truck's limited to 105. I wish I could get past him faster, but this little pilot guy here isn't blocking me off, so I'm assuming they're okay with me coming past. If he didn't want me to pass, he'd get in front of me. So here I go, ready or not. Anybody order a house? It's on the way. He's going fast, he's in a hurry, he's late. Somebody wanted their house and they wanted it right now. I've never seen a guy pulling a house this fast. Just on the double. If you want your house fast, hire this guy. He's got guts. Look at him go. All right, here we go. Here we go, he's slowing down. He's slowing up. That thing is huge. Buddy, buddy, slow down, you're fishtailing. That's a house you're pulling. Slow down. Why is he going so fast? Look at that. The whole house is bending. The deck in the front is all bent already. Buddy, you're wrecking your load. Just clip. 
flipping. He's going fast. He did slow down a little bit there so that I get by him. Holy smokes, man. Whoever bought that house, I hope they do a thorough inspection of it because that thing was shifting and bending all over the place. It's going way too fast in my opinion. I don't know. I'm not an expert in pulling houses. Never, ever have I ever seen anyone going that fast with a house. Usually they're going like, you know, 70 to 80, maybe 80 tops, kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour. I don't know. I, I don't know anything about this, so I'm not assuming that I'm right and he's wrong or whatnot, but just seemed to me like that was a little bit overboard. I tell you, man, there's something interesting every day. Every day. Somebody who pulls houses for a living, somebody who actually knows what they're talking about, tell me, was he going too fast? Or is that just normal to go like 105, 110 kilometers an hour? I'm talking like 65 miles an hour. All those bales that are wrapped in plastic off to the right there look like big giant marshmallows. Sort of makes me want to s'more. And that makes me want to go camping. Too bad we're headed out right away first thing tomorrow. We can go do some camping, make a s'more. This one's for my dad here. It's his favorite car coming up here on my left. Dodd Viper. You don't see many of them on the road anymore. I used to see more of them. Man, that's a nice car. I think Dad's favorite color is red. He always wanted a red Viper. If I ever won the lottery and became a gazillionaire, a babillionaire, first things first, I pay off everyone's mortgages in my family, buy Dad his Viper. buy everyone else their dream vehicles and then buy my dream vehicle and pay off my house and then buy a cabin or a cottage somewhere down in the southern states and just hang out for the rest of my life putting all of my money that I don't initially spend into an investment where I can just live off the interest so probably into a bank account or something that I can just live off the interest that's that's the plan and then hey Retire at 28. That's the plan. All I gotta do is win the lottery. Lotto Max, 50 million. I think I could do it. Just got back to the yard here. We're gonna drop the trailer here. We're actually gonna bobtail over to Petro Canada at uh, Deacon's Corner, which is just on the east side of Winnipeg. I gotta meet the driver there, grab her trailer, and then continue on to Saskatoon with it tomorrow. Because she's on e-logs already apparently and because she's on e-logs she can only get up to Deacon's Corner and then she's out of hours so I'm gonna pick up from it there and as soon as my 10 hours or my 8 hours are up in Canada I only have to stop for 8 consecutive hours as soon as those are up I'm gonna be on my way to Saskatoon continuing that on there to get the load delivered but I've noticed something in the yard here talking to you drivers here uh, some people have difficulty parking the trailer they drop in the yard straight. Bothers me. There's like a little smit pad and everything for you to put your dollies down onto, which gives you a good guideline to whether or not you're straight. And I come in here all the time and I see trailers parked like completely shrife, completely all crooked and diagonal, completely out of whack, taking up two spots. It's, it's, ew, I don't understand. Can you not park straight? It's just a question I'm just gonna throw out there. One thing I don't like about this Western Star, I like most of the things about this Western Star, let's say that first, but one of the things I don't like is when the doors are locked, when the door's locked and I pull the handle, it doesn't automatically open the door like every other truck I've ever driven. Usually the other trucks have driven, every other truck I've ever driven, when you open the, the inside handle, it automatically unlocks, so you're not sitting here trying to get out, right? I was gonna open it first and then open the door. I gotta find something to complain about. So we're just gonna let diesel run around in this nice grass area here. Since I'm bobtailing, I don't have a trailer on me right now. You can see here. I'm not gonna go and take up a full parking spot. Cause you know how annoyed I get when a bobtail, just the truck, takes up an entire spot for a truck and trailer. Tonight it's gonna to get pretty busy here and all those spots are gonna to need to be available for those drivers that need to stop to sleep. So I park along the back, along the curb here just to leave room for them. And plus, then I get this whole grass area. It's like a nice front yard, you know? I can let diesel run around. 
see what he says here. See what he's saying. Hey, Diesel, you want to come run around? Come on, buddy. Give her. Give him. Good boy. Oh, you don't even have to go far. Nice. So this is, uh, like I said, the Petro Pass here on the east side of Winnipeg. I'm going to grab something to eat here real quick and have a quick supper, and I'm going straight to bed. I've got to be up early. Early. She's going to be here middle of the night. She's going to drop the trailer. And then when I'm ready to leave in the morning, I can hook on and book it out of here. All the way to Saskatoon. It's going to be a 9-10 hour drive from here. It's a full day's drive. And then I believe they got something for me coming straight back. So just there and back. Nice flat run across the prairies. It's a good run for me. Good run. I'm looking forward to it. And then I'll go home for Saturday. And I'll probably leave Sunday or Monday again. Can't go far though. Because remember, i got to be back for the following weekend. Got to stay close to home. Beautiful day to drive today. Beautiful day. Sun shine the whole way. Dry. Great weather. Great temperature, not too hot, not too cool, not humid at all. Not dry though either. It's perfect, great day to drive across the prairies. I'm hoping that tomorrow and the next day will be exactly the same. Hope you join me anytime after 4 a.m. tomorrow. We'll start the journey. Hopefully I won't be too tired. I'm gonna go try to fall asleep right away. This is a lot earlier than I usually go to bed and obviously it's a lot earlier that I have to be up tomorrow. I hate being up that early, but gotta do what you gotta do, right? Just gotta get it done. I'll see you then.